I've never met anyone who thinks he was any good. David Cameron? I really do live in an echo chamber because I've never met you before or anyone who thinks that. I think that safe spaces can be used as, as a kind of escape route when it's just, oh, I need, I need some time out from this particular issue. Um, and it can be used as a way to shout down someone else's opinion. There's a lot of danger in modern debate for people just saying, I can't bear to hear what you're saying because it's offending and triggering me too much. But sometimes you need to hear the things that, that other people find offensive. So sometimes you need to listen to stuff which you don't agree with and find a way to argue back to it rather than kind of hide in some sort of bunker, which is a safe space. Actually because hearing an idea you disagree with is what they're being kept safe from though. Because when you say safe, the opposite of safe is basically being in danger. Yeah. And that's, and if people feel like they're in danger, if feel like maybe we should listen to them. I think people should be allowed to express opinions that other people violently disagree with, and you should be encouraged to have proper debates about it. But yeah. I mean, the definition of safe space seems to be protected from from ideas that yeah. that may, but they may find offensive. And I don't think people should be protected from ideas that they find offensive. I didn't even think this was a controversial point. I thought it had. What? Well, go on, explain. I was just reading that 130,000 disabled people have died because of austerity. I don't, I, I did, no, tell me your point, because I didn't even think this was, I thought this was a fact. In a way, I completely see what you mean, and I think hollowing out public services can be an absolute nightmare. Mm -hmm. I think it's quite hard to say that definitely a lack of money was the problem behind X, Y, Z, whatever. Sure it's sometimes it's kind of broken than... systems, and that sometimes there's just, you've got to cut money out and find another way to solve the problem. It's just there was a lot of money for Brexit. After Theresa May said there was no magical money tree for things like mental health services, homelessness services. And I mean, when they launched an inquiry into whether and why the homelessness problem had gotten so bad, I thought this is astonishing and I feel like they would be able to see it with the naked eye if these people ever walked anywhere. <laughs> dangerous to sort of bandy around the word transphobic too readily. There's a sort of level of skepticism which comes, not nasty skepticism, not sort of satiric, just kind of let's analyse this huge phenomenon sensibly and see, and yeah. you've got to be allowed to ask questions when something this big is happening. With literally any prejudice, you always get this. We got this with Islamophobia, you get it with, you even get it with sort of fat phobia, people framing their arguments as concern when uh, there's something a little bit nastier underneath. I actually think it's dangerous to sort of dismiss the people who are saying, actually, your concerns are hurting me. And so perhaps what's, what's needed right now is much kinder language. Brexit, now you go. Okay, Brexit, I honestly don't see what on earth he could have done in those circumstances. And I, I don't think that that was his best move, I'm just defending, but <laughs> I mean obviously when you look at it now and the mess that we're in now, whatever side you mm. thought in the referendum on Brexit, whatever you believe on it, it does seem to be a mess. I've never met anyone who thinks he was any good. I, this, I really do live in an echo chamber because I've never met you before or anyone who thinks that. I mean, she was absolutely lousy, obviously. I just feel mean saying strongly disagree. I feel a bit mean. She tried so hard. She was given a difficult hand. She played it very, very badly. I, I don't know what else to say. Yes, she got a mess. It was horrible. He doesn't do anything. No. He's supposed to be the hope right now. That's the main reason I'm furious with him, is that it is, it's so embarrassing what's going on and he's supposed to be the hope. He's petty and sort of vindictive and everything he says is so sort of small and so kind of trying to seek offence. He's just not the person to unite the country. I'm normally vote Conservative, but if there was a good Labour leader, a strong Labour leader who had ideas and had a way to unite the country and treated people with respect, then mm. I would probably vote for that person. I 
I was recently, in the last few years, told by my mother that I'm Jewish. So I have this weird perspective where um, I actually identify with this group, and so I do hear the anti-Semitic dog whistles that happen. But also, because I don't present as Jewish, um, I hear what they say when the Jews leave the room. Yeah, I just cannot believe that people like, you, it just, it's so obviously happening. Just wouldn't get these brilliant Labour MPs feeling like the party doesn't represent them anymore. They're not making it up. I don't think particularly that the sort of higher echelons of the Conservative Party has a sort of institutional problem with Islamophobia. I think it's much more of a kind of grassroots Conservative Party members issue, but I do agree that it's a problem. Mm. It's rough. I have nothing yeah. to add, yeah, seriously. Yeah. Just, <laughs> <laughs> That yeah. could have been so awkward. <laughs> <Imagine> <laughs> <me>. <laughs> <Cheers>. <laughs>